Hey, what's happening, Cheesecake Nation? It is your old pal, Super Chudge Funk, in the day of blasting at you with another This Week in Wrestling. We are. So what do you want to talk about first? Um, it's kind of... I don't think what we should do first. Um, yeah, let's talk about uh, some Lucha first. Let's uh, get that out of the way. Um... The, uh, so what, what matches were there this week? Other than the main event. There really wasn't a whole lot. We had the incredibly quick uh, three-man between the crew and Joey Ryan. Yeah. I was literally, like, I fast-forwarded because I thought it went to commercial. And I was like, oh shit, and hit the play button. And then, like, Joey Ryan was outside. And then he, like, walked into the ring and got rolled for one. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so that, so, that's everybody who's getting a, a medallion, right? All the medallions are passed out? Yes, seven medallions. I don't know what they're going to do with chain, uh, chain, Cage and Java. I guess we'll see. Yeah, they'll probably do something next week. Just uh... yeah, beat the shit out of Chavo. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Trios match. Yeah, the trios match. So it was Son of Havoc, Ivelisse, and Johnny Mundo with Taya in versus, the corner versus Team Super Magnificent Awesome. Is Mysterio, Puma, and Dragon Azteca Jr. Uh, yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, I I don't know what they're planning on doing with Super Ultra Mega Team. <laughs> I was really kind of hoping we would get Mundo, uh, Darewolf, and Evans as a team instead. Like I think that would have worked a little bit better. Uh, obviously, I think they're setting up for Taya and Mundo versus Son of Havoc and Ivelisse. Yeah, yeah. On the tag action. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. Yeah, that would be something match. to do. Gets him away from Cage, at least, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. Then, um, was there any other match or just those three? I believe it was just the three. Right. And then, uh, quite an interesting match, to say the least. It was uh, basically a casket match. Yeah, four corners casket match. Just like any other one. You gotta put the your opponent in a casket, close it, and then they die. <laughs> so I don't know, I wasn't really feeling this match that much. Yeah, like in the I think it started off pretty strong, but it very quickly just kinda started to lose it on me. Yeah, I mean I did Mil Muertes, but I'm really quickly starting to you not really give that much shit about Matanza. Yeah, Matanza is slowly turning into... I might even dislike him more than Cage, in all honesty. <laughs> and you can hear it in the crowd, too. They really weren't behind him, either. Yeah, like... It's just... He's just not good. <laughs> like, he has a couple good moves. But other than that, like, he's not doing anything. It's just, like, what's the point of this? So I, like I said, I'm just, I'm not into it. Yeah. The, the end of the match was super, super just shit. Yeah. We just picked it up and like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing we can look forward to is apparently there's a new big boss coming. A uh, random wealthy man who is apparently the most powerful man in the world. <laughs> According to that guy we've seen a couple times. That not a cop. Yeah. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to talk about on Lucha this week. Yeah. But, uh, not the greatest show ever, but... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't horrible. You know, the six-man, which I'm not really into, just the teams they chose, like, it was still yeah. a really good match. Yeah, still fun to watch. Above anything else. And that's, you know, I can forgive it for that. Uh, I guess we'll do NXT because we just watched it. Uh, not a whole lot this week either. Yeah. 
Uh, Nakamura and Alex Riley was a fun match. Yeah, it's always good. We saw our, I think it was our very first English, uh, our WWE Nakamura promo. <laughs> he said one word, and then yeah, Alex Riley seizure. said he is <laughs> angry or something. Is that the fuck? Oh, rage. He said he's feeling the rage. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we were just talking about how we've never heard him do a promo before. Well, I follow Asuka, and she posted like this picture about how apparently Nakamura is going to teach her English, and then he cuts a promo like that. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, continuing on, we had American Alpha beat up a couple goons. Yeah. I say though, I, I'm starting to like American. Like I'm not 100 percent sold on them yet, but like they're pretty entertaining to watch. They, I mean, they're great athletes. I just I don't know. Yeah, like like I said, they haven't quite sold me yet. I'm a little off put by Jason Jordan. He looks a little dangerous, at least to me. Yeah. Between the finish, which kind of looks dangerous, he did that like I don't even know what the hell to call it. Like running flapjack thing he did to the guy. The guy like landed on like one arm. I was like, oh, that looks pretty <laughs> scary. And then he did it again in the same match. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, the dude is a super athlete. Like, his belly to belly was awesome. But I'm a little worried that he's a little dangerous. <laughs> hey, maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, the other guys were just selling it really well. But it looked pretty scary to me. Yeah. Uh, the Drifter and Balor... Yeah. Yeah. I don't really like the drifter. Balor did his thing and he won. Yeah. He named his finisher. That's... <laughs> uh, we had Paul Ellering's daughter, Rachel. Which is cool to see that like all these second generation female wrestlers are coming in. That's cool. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they'll get a good shot, you know. Like they've yeah. been shooting cutie. I mean, I think she'll do fine. Maybe get a little better fitting pants. Yeah. <laughs> We were watching that and just like, she needs to pull up the pants before they fall down. <laughs> Showing the business, the business. <laughs> but I, I thought she did fine for what she did. She just kind of put Alexa Bliss over. Yeah, uh, yeah really nothing else happened on NXT. We yeah. have a set up for... Blake and Murphy versus Austin Aries and a partner is choosing, which is probably either Eric Young or Bobby Roode. Other than that, yeah, that's oh, we got uh, Bailey and Nia Jax, uh, Nia Jax got Nia set up. And then obviously the next takeover we get a rematch of Balor and Joe. Hopefully Joe wins again and Balor comes up to the main roster just after uh, SummerSlam. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'm assuming that's when the next one is. Like that same SummerSlam weekend. Yeah, other than that, not a whole hell of a lot of NXT this week. Just kind of a, you know, just a weak week. Continuing on with this fucking trend. It's going to Raw and SmackDown. Uh, I watched SmackDown, but I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> After I saw they had changed the advertised made event, so that bugged me. Yeah. I'm kind of getting sick of watching, like, the same matches over and over and over. Like with the same people. Yeah, and over and over. Like, they pretty much ruined the mystique of seeing AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns within a month. Like, way to go, assholes. <laughs> like, how many six-mans do we have to sit through? Can somebody think, explain to me why does everybody in the Bullet Club hate Samoans? <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad for me, at least. If who the who's supposed to be the heels and who's supposed to be the faces? They're all faces. <laughs> We're all faces now. <laughs> Roman seventy six told me so. <laughs> We're all guys now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, this Extreme Rules is not looking on the up and up. Yeah, the only thing is I could honestly say I'm excited to see 
Rusev, uh, Rusev and Kalisto, which hopefully will be pretty good, but I haven't been enjoying the build of it at all. Like, they've just done it really stupidly. And, like, on SmackDown, when they covered it, they were just like, oh, Lana interfered first, but they're showing the footage, which is Kalisto standing up on the fucking apron long before yeah. Lana got in there. And then they're all like, oh, yes, totally. Lana cost Rusev the thing. It's like, no, Kalisto kicked him in the fucking head. And then, please, God, never let Kalisto do commentary again. <laughs> it was like the second time he's done it where it was just like, Brutally hard yeah. to listen to. Let Rusev do fucking commentary. Make Kalisto wrestle. Like, Rusev can at least cut fucking promos. Yeah. Kalisto just is not very good on the mic. Yeah, we need Rusev this week. He needs to take out Sin Car to make it a one on one. Uh, you know, the rubber match, and he just has to, like, brutalize him. Like, he brutalized him pretty good on SmackDown, but I mean, like, take him out so he's not at extreme rules kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and other than that, the other one I kind of think could be pretty good is Becky and Emma. I think that should be a good match. Yeah. Dana Brooke got brought up, so that gives Emma an obvious advantage going into it. I don't know where they're planning on going. I want to say I would assume Emma wins, but at the same time, your champion's heel, so what's the point of building up Emma? Yeah. Plus, they've just been making Becky Lynch look like crap lately. Yeah. They just have not made her look strong at all. You know what, like, seems to be just, like, the forgotten uh, diva? Summer Rae. Like, she's kind of, like, on the down low, a pretty solid wrestler, and I'd like to see her do something. Like, they're not really doing anything with her. Like, I see a lot of people that are like, oh, she's not good. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, she's a perfectly fine wrestler. Like, there's nothing bad about Summer Rae at all. So I would like to see her do something. But, she's, again, she's a heel. Like, I don't know. Is Paige the one they're going to build up in Orlando Charlotte? Maybe. I mean, it seems like they've kind of exhausted everybody else unless they're going to bring up Bailey soon. Yeah, that was my theory for a while. Like, they were just going to... They were going to... Do this thing with Ric Flair, you know, where they're, like, trying to make it seem like she doesn't need Ric Flair. But I'm guessing they're not going to put Bailey on the main roster until at least SummerSlam. Yeah. So who does Charlotte feud with until SummerSlam? Could be. And then I'm assuming by Mania, they're hoping to have Nikki back so they can do Nikki and whoever the champion is. Nikki and uh, Bailey, probably. You know, pass the torch kind of moment. But who knows if she'll pass the torch. <laughs> Pass it over Hogan style. <laughs> she get her win back on Raw. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jericho and Ambrose is Jericho and Ambrose. Nothing special. Broke a pot. It got us. Like, it needs to be said because all well, my boys over at uh, what culture already said it, but uh. The fact that a fucking potted plant is more over than your current champion, that, that says something right there. Like, what the fuck, WWE? You gotta, you gotta work on it, man. Well, it's just kind of like an internet smarty douche. I know, but, thing. but still. Yeah. That's still... Well, I'm thinking they haven't seen it come back. I assume that's their plan. They're gonna have Cena kind of shotgun reins up. And do like Cena, Reigns, few of them until SummerSlam, and hopefully Rollins will be back for SummerSlam. And yeah. maybe if you have Jericho put over Ambrose Strong again, somebody else put over Ambrose Strong again, maybe SummerSlam you have a, a three way shield for the title. That'd be neat. I think that's kind of the plan right now, if I had to guess. Uh. Here's a good question. It has nothing to do with anything going on in WWE right now. I'm assuming Brock is coming back for SummerSlam. Who do you think he's going against? I think it's the Trippers. Shano. Like, I can't... I, I don't see anything being no built idea. up in the company right now to go against Brock. Unless... Unless they're going to do like what you said and have Cena go up against Roman. Could be AJ? 
I, yeah, but I, I assume Adrian's going know. to lose again to... Well, yeah. I mean, they're going to have Bray back by then, so maybe they build Bray up to go against Brock because they've kind of kept teasing it and it never delivered on it. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know what their plan is. Yeah, it, at this point, it's just... It's almost impossible to, like, to figure out what they're trying to do. I mean, I know a lot of people, for some reason, want to see Randy Orton and Brock. I personally don't give a shit, but yeah, I know there's a lot of people that want to see like, that match. Yeah? Because we're supposedly we're getting Cena, Rollins, and Orton back all within the next few months. Okay. So that's going to be an infusion of talent to the top. I'm kind of hoping they push Orton down a little bit. Just uh, I've seen everything Orton's doing, and he hasn't evolved as a character. Like, if he wants to go and do something and evolve as a character, sure. Yeah. I, I think but that... he's just going to be Randy Orton... Beep, boop, beep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like... I would... Because we were both pretty big fans of Randy Orton for a while, like you said, during I mean, the he's evolution He's a great wrestler, days. but he just... He hasn't just, changed since yeah. the mid-2000s. So yeah, like, he needs to... He needs a... Not a huge overhaul, but a little sprinkle of some goodness here yeah, and there in his he character. He just needs... Yeah, he needs something for his character to do. something. So, hopefully we'll see him do something. Maybe have Randy build up somebody. And I'm kind of assuming by SummerSlam we might see Nakamura on the main roster. Maybe. I mean, he they created his King of Strong Style shirt and it immediately sold out. Oh, shit. So, he's moving merchandise. He's obviously a star. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think even Vince has to look and go, holy shit. What about Nakamura Brock? That'd be a cool one. Yeah, I don't know if Brock would feel alright putting over Nakamura. Like, Nakamura looks like a star and everything, but he is going to look a lot smaller than Brock. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Brock would be cool with it. So I feel like you've got to have Brock put over somebody at some fucking point. Yeah. I mean, I thought Ambrose was the guy to put him over, especially when you knew Brock was going to be out for... Months and months and months. So put over Ambrose. I didn't care how Ambrose won. Like he could have literally like pulled out a fucking shovel <laughs> and <laughs> beaten Brock to the head with it until Brock fucking passed out. Yeah, that was one thing. No, I don't think anybody thought that Dean was gonna lose that one, but they made him lose. I mean, a lot of people did, but there's well, nobody thought he should. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of anything going on in the main roster right now I really care about. Vaude Villains, New Day, I assume they're keeping the title of the New Day. I think it was fairly obvious they wanted to do Cass and Enzo versus New Day. Yeah. But then Enzo was hurt, so... Yeah, I think they have no real plans for the Vaude Villains right now. You can kind of tell in that they're just coming out, they're like, Oh, we will totally win. And the New Day are like, No, you won't. Like, oh. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I hope the bot villains don't just end up doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, we got the Shining Stars are coming in. Do you think they're going to be a filler for the titles until Enzo's back? Maybe. I mean, I still don't know what their gimmick is. Puerto Rican travel agents? <laughs> They just think they're better than anybody else because they come from a really beautiful country. Yeah, I just guess. Like, oh, maybe. we have good food just... and beautiful women and beaches. Ha <laughs> <laughs> heal. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's go into Camp WWE. Right, episode number two. Um, I don't think it was as funny as the first one, but it was still pretty funny. I have to give it major points off in that the whole thing is about how they're going to send all the campers home when the first episode was about how none of the campers could go home. Yeah. So it was just like... Mm. You know, but but at the same time, it's like when there's only two episodes and you have the premise like that, it's just... Yeah. It just doesn't sound good. This one was definitely more focused around the kids. Kids? <laughs> the camp is... Yeah. I don't know. Like, really no try. Stephanie didn't have a line. Flair had a few really funny things. Yeah. 
Like, Rock's like, I'm oh, going yeah. for a walk. Like, Give me a skin bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, uh, get, we got the Rock this episode, which was pretty funny. We had a Becky Lynch sighting. That was cool. KO. <laughs> yeah, we had the Shield guys in the kickball field. I think they were in the first episode. Oh, he had painted a line. Oh, yeah, painted she had, like, the line. strongest accent ever. <laughs> a <laughs> giant, <laughs> giant man-child Mark Henry with with, a, with full beard. Yeah, which is kind of weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, we got a mute gold dust. Yeah, what the heck was up with that? Like, why was he mute? Am I forgetting gold dust from? Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't have gone with, like, classic Kane who actually was mute or something like that. Yeah. Why haven't we had Kane? Busy. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like he's gonna play himself. I mean, why wouldn't he just play, like... Unless it's gonna be an episode for later on when yeah. they do a thing where, like, who's that? Undertaker's like, that's my brother. <laughs> you know, and yeah, they, that's, like, a whole episode. Good. That would be really nice. Like, Paul Bearer, like, brings him there. I got a question. Is Big Show Jewish? Like in real life? Yeah. I'll have to look that up later. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't think he was. I've never like, heard him talk about like the Sabbath. <laughs> this whole episode he's talking about having to go to Jewish camp. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's Jewish. I just... <laughs> I've never heard him say like anything ever about it. Or to be like a running joke in this. Yeah. Like how Undertaker thinks it's cool. <laughs> But yeah, the, the John Cena character is freaking hysterical. Yeah. Like it's, it's exactly like... The one thing I really enjoy, like, most of the caricatures are, like, spot on for, like, how, like, exaggerated they are. They're very much like the fan perspective yeah. version of a character. Except for our truth Yeah. I'm not that big... Like, he's just... He's just... Token black kid. Yeah. He, he hasn't... Like, he's not as zany as you think he would be. Yeah, like he's. Well, I mean, at the same time, Archer's not that big of a fan favorite. Like, he definitely has fans. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, but I mean, but I mean, he's not Stone Cold. Like Stone Cold has a very like pinpoint personality. Like this yeah. is Stone Cold. He's the Hellraiser, and John Cena. He's kind of like the white meat baby face. <laughs> like, let's all get along and go out for chocolate frosty milkshakes. <laughs> I was surprised they made Nikki's gimmick that she's a whore. <laughs> she's like a little kid, and she's just like, call me Rock. <laughs> and she's like, John will go with me. And she's like... <laughs> I don't think like, we had any other like really crazy sightings in the episode. There was another Rusev sighting. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... No lot of sightings. <laughs> yeah, not yet. I'm trying to think of like, some superstars that they haven't done. Like, which ones would they bring in? Would they bring in any past superstars? It sucks that, like, Hogan is where he is right now, because he would be a fucking awesome character. Yeah. At some I'm, point. I'm kind of hoping they'll just kind of bury the hatchet with him. I don't... I mean, are there people... Please, leave a comment if you would be offended if Hogan came back to WWE. Because to me personally, I, I don't care. Granted, I'm not a black guy. So. <laughs> I mean, maybe it truly offends you. I just look at it like he said something really stupid. He knows it was stupid. But it was taken out of like... Like people say stupid shit in the confidence of their own home. Yeah. And to be like, oh, it's, now it's on everywhere. Everybody gets to judge Hogan for something he said privately. When he was very obviously having a real shitty time with his daughter. Like, let's not pretend he was just, like, at a clan meeting. He was like, <laughs> hello, brother. <laughs> like, no, he was obviously put a lot of money into this project with his daughter, and he felt like he got betrayed by his daughter. Like, the big thing that really, like, spoke to me about it was they interviewed, like every black wrestler that fucking Hogan had ever, like, wrestled or known. And everybody's like, yeah, he's not a racist. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's an asshole. But... <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, let's let's forgive Hogan. I mean, it's not like he yeah. fucking killed somebody. 
It's not like he was like, oh, I won't put over fucking The Rock. He's a black guy. <laughs> He's two things I'm not quite a big fan of, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah, like, give the guy some fucking slack. Like, yeah. give me one little mistake. He clearly felt bad about it. Like, yeah. it's just it's one of those things that, you know. But it, it, it's like, you can't separate Hulk Hogan from the WWE. Yeah. And it's just weird that they're trying. And I, I get why they're trying, but bring them back. Bring Hogan back. Let them talk about the, the Superdome. <laughs> Let them just gotta be... The Super Silverdome. Yeah, the Super Silverdome. <laughs> they held $93 billion <laughs> To watch him suplex under the Giant. Vertical style. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top rope. <laughs> Brother, brother, <laughs> onto a flaming table. They watched Hogan. He fronted Metallica. <laughs> and Pontiac Super Silverdome <laughs> against rival band Andre and the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> they might be Andre and the Giants. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let them back. All right. Continuing on, I want to talk a little bit about. Table for threes. I think we're gonna slowly start checking out some of the other originals. We're probably not gonna do like a full expose ex- episode by episode <laughs> review. I mean, maybe if Swerve season two is good, maybe. But yeah, I started checking it out. I watched most of them. I gotta say, like, they're hit and miss. Honestly, some of them are really good. The uh, the Ryback, Dolph, and Daniel Bryan one hilarious. The NXT one. I mean, it's definitely trying to get NXT over, so it's very obvious, like, oh, what do you think of the training center? Oh, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's like if fucking Jesus spread his butthole <laughs> and it was a training center. So, it's like... But it's still a lot of good stuff. The ones I'd recommend... Uh, definitely the WCW guys. It's Vader, DDP, and Sting. That's a really cool one. The Click one, which is the newest one, is a pretty good one, but it's very much just about the last WrestleMania. Uh, or actually, no, the WrestleMania before that. The one that's Sting. <laughs> uh, like I said, the Ryback one, that was a pretty good one. They might end up pulling it down, though. Ryback leaves. Uh... There's any other ones. The one with the classic divas is pretty cool. If you're just a fan of old school wrestling, if you're not, you might not enjoy it as much. There's one with uh, the four horsemen, the three of the four horsemen. <laughs> it's Tully, Arn, and Flair. That one's pretty cool. At the same time, though, I've already talked about that one and my kind of issues with Arn at the end of it. But uh, other than that, man, I if they're about 20 minutes, something like that. They're not super long, but they're fun little things. They have some cool road stories. If that's something that sounds like you'd be interested in, they have newer guys, they have older guys, they have newer girls, they have older girls. Like, the one about the three, uh, the three second generation divas. Well, actually, technically, Natty's a third gen. I don't know who Superfly's dad is, because I don't know if Tamina's the Gen 2. And, yeah, Flair is our first Gen, so... Yeah, but, like, them talking about, like, one thing they brought up in it that WWE never really talks about is Tamina is the first uh, Polynesian female wrestler. Like, she pretty much carries that whole fucking area of the globe on her back. Like, she's the only one yeah, that is pretty interesting, because you don't think about it like that. Because there's a crap ton of Samoan wrestlers. Yeah. But the fact that she's the only one that's female is kind of, kind of interesting to think about. I think she's actually Fijian, or at least. Well, well yeah. yeah, I mean, they're all Polynesian Islanders, but I think they're all... The yeah, Hawaii well, family are just all connected somehow. Yeah, I don't want to step on them toes, you know. It's like, I ain't <laughs> well, the same no, thing like, as them Fijians or whatever that they would say. Like, Alright, there's like a key <laughs> to it, like, Appa and Sika's family are 
connected because they're br- br- uh, blood brothers. They're not actually related, so it's technically two families, but right. everybody kind of considers them brothers. Yeah. But uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Next week, you know, I'm going to do Summer Ray. I'm going to make her great again. This week, I think we talked about enough new stuff. I don't think there's really anybody I really need to see. Anything you want to talk about before we wrap this episode up? Other than... <laughs> Good job, Birdo. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who are not in the know, apparently Paige and Alberto Del Rio are now a couple. So yeah, congrats to Berto. Good <laughs> yeah. job. Way to aim high. <laughs> so yeah. All right, guys. Berto. I suppose that's going to be it for this week. Extreme Rules is two weeks away, so make sure to check us out then. Now, if you guys have any suggestions at all, we have noticed that our last couple videos gotten pretty high or at least from our last few you know yeah. we, we really appreciate that you know looking at all the views you know you know drop a subscribe if you guys want we'd really appreciate it please comment down below let us know if there's anything you guys we should think we should talk about anything you don't think that we shouldn't talk about whatever any little topics that you want us to discuss talk about how much Darren Young stole my gimmick <laughs> coming for that ass but with that and guys non <laughs> anti-gay way <laughs> but with that guys I'm Supercharged Funk when you go Montoya kill my father pay die see you guys next time later